It's the best show I've ever done. I, I feel I am beginning <laughs> at last to, to realise my potential, as they say. I'm here today at this absolutely amazing art exhibition by the renowned painter Graham Crowley. It's got everything you'd expect to find in a stunning art exhibition. Beautiful, beautiful paintings with amazing brushwork. And then this intrigue and mystery within these stunning pictures. But it's also got motorbikes. What are motorbikes doing in an art exhibition? Let's find out. So, Graham, tell us what is going on in this absolutely amazing exhibition. Thanks, Rob. Well, um, it's, it's the first of two, it's two exhibitions. This is the first part. This is about work, workplaces. Yeah. The second one is wild spaces. Oh, right. Y yes, that's, oh, that's right. Cool. Yeah. Right, and they run consecutively here at the print room. Okay. Okay, okay right. Um, I mean, this, I, I, this is just amazing. Thank I you. I mean, you look at it and you feel like you're inside this, what I guess is a workspace. Oh, it's a workshop. Yes, of yeah. course it is. Yes. Anyway, uh, when I, well, basically, because I'm involved with motorcycles, I've obviously been to this place called Andy Tiernan's. It's Tiernan's workshop in Framlingham, right? Okay. Probably the most, um, probably the largest or the most, it's got a world reputation. It's like okay. stepping in to the best museum without the kind of gift shop or any of the kind of packaging and all the rest of it. And, okay? and this is a place that what fixes or builds? No, no, no. They, they simply, they, they can mend to a certain degree and fix their stock, yeah. but they sell, it's a motorcycle dealer's. It's a motorcycle yeah, dealer's, but, yeah. But a very special one. Yeah. It's, um, as I say, they, ex they deal exclusively with motorcycles from the veteran and vintage period, and most of the bikes are British classic. Oh, okay. So, so it's classic, beautiful, yeah, old school, old British. beautiful things, yes, yeah. yes. Anyway, in the workshop, of course, it, it is literally a workshop, right? Yeah. And of course, my memory of it is yeah. of it being a plethora of objects. And of course, in fact, can we just go over to that painting? Yeah, there? of course. My first attempt at the painting of the workshop. Oh, fascinating. Yes, yes, was probably, that's, this is the first version, right? Yeah. Where things like spanners, I, I, I'm one of those people who knows too much about their subject, you get it? <laughs> yes, there's people, I've seen pictures of workshops by sort of, um, or, or workplaces and, and things, yeah. by people who obviously aren't carpenters or engineers, and yeah. they're pretty good paintings, okay? They succeed because they're looking at the space, not the actual objects. They're not scrutinising oh, okay. it, okay? Very right. interesting. Yeah, projecting their uh, kind of knowledge onto the space, okay? Yeah. Right. But what I've done here is it was more... A kind of uh, a list. I was thinking in a more categorical, you know, ca like a catalogue, yeah. like, like an illustrator might, in a sense, trying yeah. to get all the details right. And then I suddenly realised the thing that really excited me was yeah. the shadow under this bench. Oh, yeah. wow, it's beautiful, that shadow, yeah. isn't it? Right, okay. Now, yeah. this is where it makes the leap. Because <laughs> that's where it starts, and yeah. it's, it's okay, it's a fairly achieved painting, right? Yeah. And it, it's, it's accurate in a, t in a descriptive sense, right? Yeah. But the thing I suddenly realised that really excited me about these workshops yeah. wasn't so much the actual subject matter, yeah. but the light in them or the absence, mm. what, what Walpole called glimpse. Okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah okay, very cool. right. And so now we're moving on, there's two or three different versions. Well, there are, there are, there are large ones and small ones, there are 10 in all. Yeah. But this was the breakthrough painting, right? Okay. And here, what I did was I suddenly thought, right, I'm going to paint the shadows. I'm going to paint the light. Mm. To hell with what it's all about. And yeah. so all I very simply did was very crudely masked up a shelf unit oh, yes. and the top of a stool, I think. Yeah. And I think that was about it. And then covered, because the method is very really important that, yeah. see, I'm one of those people who thinks that Manet sort of reinvented painting when he painted that, those wonderful wet into wet paintings. I mean, those yeah. asparagus tips. Oh yeah, flower paintings. amazing, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, but technically amazing as well, because mm. what happens is not only do you engage with the subject matter, yeah. right? Yeah. You also enjoy the materiality, the reality, the, the, the reality of the painting, the totally. thing itself, right? Yeah. As well yeah. as the subject matter, whatever that is. Okay, mm. right. So the subject matter here is the workshop, but that in a sense is something I'm sort of, I'm engaged with it, but that's not the whole story. What I'm really engaged with, or what I'm really preoccupied by when yeah. painting this painting and subsequent ones, 
mm. or the better paintings in the show, in my opinion, yeah. is the shadow. I keep thinking, where's the light coming from? Where's the light coming from? Okay. Even though they will be recreations and reinventions of a space, they're mm. not. You know, they're not. They're not objective in any sense. Yeah. Oh, far from it. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. And so. I always think, right, where's the darkest part? This is where I put the paint down. And by the way, the surface is completely covered in liquid. So I'm painting yeah. wet into wet, but the, yeah. the lemon, this is cadmium lemon, that's yeah. already dry, okay? So there is a skein, there's a film of uh, polymerized resin over the whole surface, and then I paint the paint spray, and it's important that it's paint spray, mm. into that wet surface, right? So, so it's wet into wet painting. Oh, so you've covered the whole of it? The back with, with, liquid. With, cad with cadmium lemon. And that has dried. And that's totally dried. Yep, both then dry. there's a massive wash of wet liquid over the top yes, of it. Yes, just all. liquid. No pigment, just liquid. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then and you paint into that. And I paint into the liquid the paint's great. Uh, directly using a two inch, a three inch of well, hog's hair. But here, you can here, see here, the you, huge brush. Oh, you can, yes, you can see that the brush yeah. here is about four inch brush or five inch brush. Yeah, exactly. And basically, the reason I use that, it, it's totally, it's totally um, pragmatic, is to minimise the amount of incident that one stroke causes when you're moving like that. Oh, very interesting. And then gradually assembling the space, yeah. trying to, re, you know, remembering, because don't forget, I have rehearsed this subject before painting it. I'm not going in here going, oh, I remember the workshop and then throw it together. Yeah. No, it, as I say, starting with these extraordinary spaces with, with, with this, these shadows, right? Yeah. And so I'm painting the, the fall of light. The content is light and shadow. The subject matter is the workshop, right? Yeah. So uh, we can talk about the subject matter separately, but at present I'm talking about the more direct and painterly and formal values, yeah, yeah? and yeah. psychological values. Yeah. Right, the other thing about this workshop is I've never been very, very clear about where the windows are, <laughs> ever. No. I have, no. I've never looked up to think, oh, oh that's a really dirty strong. fan light, exactly. Yeah. 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 Because there are no windows on the walls. It, is, it, isn't, it isn't overly lit, but yeah. that's the beauty of the space, yeah, okay? Exactly. Right, so then gradually, this is laid down, this is broken up, and you can see, look, here for instance, yeah. when, when you're pressing hard with a hog's hair brush, removes the paint yeah, yeah. and causes, like, it's like ploughing. You see, when you, when you cut through the paint, you get these edges, these that's wonderful really edges. Good, and what I'm trying to do is put more pressure there so yeah. I'm forming a shadow at the same time as making a drag. Oh, that's quite yeah, intriguing. Yeah, exactly. And you're then, playing course, with light on light on Yeah, light. that's right, yeah, yeah, restoring yeah. the light. Or yeah. things like this, this handlebar image, where it's just literally cut out. And then I had to quickly turn the brush back to get oh, that shadow that on bit. the edge there. Yeah, that's right? so cool, that bit yeah, there. Yeah and the dustbin and all the rest of it. But listen, mm -hmm. the, the naming of the past doesn't matter. What does matter, and this is the really, I think the, the bit that I particularly enjoyed, is, is this stool yeah, and things like that. Yeah, it has, it is as vivid as hell, right? Yeah, the space, absolutely. the space illusionistically works, right? But if you take a really, a, a careful look at the stool, the top and the legs, yeah, they're clearly uh, delineated, right? Yeah, and lit. Yeah. But look at the other two legs. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah. They vanish. Yeah, but it works. yeah, but there, but it's, it's about the hierarchy of light, mm. not necessarily the hierarchy of meaning. Yes. Yeah? yeah, it's a phenomenal, in the yeah. strictest sense, uh, approach. And here, for instance, you get this almost wonderful sort of ambient sense of the light running down. Yes. Yeah. You know, and here you get projections. You know, so I've, I've, and there are two oh, glazes. Yeah. You can see here. There's the original one, and there's a secondary glaze. And yeah. it's always Payne's grey because Payne's grey is not is anything but black. Yeah. It's uh, viridian. It's mm. ochres. It's uh, mm. oh, I can go on and on. Anyway, yeah, it's a mixture a... Uh, invented in the 19th century by a Scots guy called Payne. Oh right. But yeah. Yeah. Which is why it's spelled G R A Y, not G R E Y. Oh. Hmm. Anyway, now, and the other thing finally is apart from all of this removal, so it's I'm putting the paint on and I'm taking the paint off, all of this is obviously done a la prima while it's wet, right? Yeah. Okay, right. There are little bits there that was, that was masked, that was masked, that wasn't, that wasn't, and that was. I think it's self evident. Yeah, yeah. And, things really like, yeah and things like this, right? Cool. And then yeah. gradually, very, very gently, easing mm. the brush up. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. So you get that gradation there. But mm. this, finally, I suddenly thought, what happens if you scrape the paint off, right? Yeah. So there's a kind of the material. It's, it's the, actually the paint's doing that. And yeah. then, look, just introduce these mm. tentative, almost tromboid, not tromboid, but tentative yeah, yeah. illusionistic shadows, like the clock, for instance. Look at the yeah. clock. One stroke, two, and then two dashes. 
It's, it's so there's a kind of sort of what I think of as a directness and honesty yeah. about the painting. I don't oh, like totally. the word honesty particularly, but yeah. things like this, the way that is lit, oh, it's gorgeous, because it's cut. It? Yeah. Mm. See, there's 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 Just a it's it's pants, it's about so. the fall of light. At the fact it might or might not be a spanner is of no qualitative importance whatsoever. It's yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. So but this was the breakthrough painting. Yeah. It, and now here, here's oh, another version. It uses very, uh, again. Th I think this one was painted just before that one. Yeah. Okay. You can see. So you can see the movement, the progression yeah, from, from the him. first yeah. to the. Uh, what is what number is this? Yeah, number two. two. Yes. Right. So for, yes. So the progression from the first one yeah. over there. We've got some over there. Yeah. Yep. To this over one. To already, you can see that I'm focusing much more on the paint handling. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, um, it's, I mean, I, I don't think this painting succeeds half as much as this one because mm. the way that it is lit is, is kind of in a more sort of, it, 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 it's, it's more scattered. It's, it's not okay. so controlled. And it was that, and, every, and by the way, every painting, or almost every painting, is actually a kind of, particularly if it's of a similar subject, mm. will be a reappraisal of a previous painting. Okay. So mm. if I think something is unsatisfactory, you know, I will revise it and, and take a different approach the next time. Similar subject, maybe different size, different colour, but rethink the proposition. I, I think there's something actually far more fascinating about repainting the same thing and working mm. on the idea oh. than painting hundreds and hundreds of different oh. yeah. things. I was just going to say, when people talk about words like ideas, for instance. <laughs> okay, right, well, I don't want to get into that one now, but <laughs> I mean, I have very few, and as one person once said, uh, in fact, I was interviewing somebody at the Royal College once with, with Peter de France here, mm. the previous pr professor, and uh, the guy showed Peter a sketchbook and said, these are my ideas, oh, and yeah. Peter rather theatrically looked through it and went, oh, you're a very lucky man. There are a hundred <laughs> pages in his sketchbook, and each one of them is an idea. He said, yes. And <laughs> I said, you're very lucky indeed. He said, because apparently John Richardson thinks that Picasso only had three. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, <"Ew."> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the kindest moment, but it was really something. Yeah. Anyway, so moving yeah. right the way down the line, yeah. he, here's, here's the one after that one, and you can see... Oh, right. Right, yes, oh, it, yeah. fascinating. You've gone much, much smaller. Yeah, much smaller, yeah. yeah. But look how vivid the space is. Oh, it's even more intense. Yeah. And this painting, as I'm sure you can see, is... Yeah. Oh, it's only 30 by 40 centimetres. Yeah. Yes. So let's move on down and, okay. and go on through the show. Take us over to the next, the next spot you think we should... Uh, well, what I would like to show to. you is this. I mean, yeah. I've, 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 as I say, I've spoken about the method. That, you know, it's, it's very much a direct uh, form of painting. And there's a minimalism to it, a spareness, yeah. Yeah, yeah. an economy. Right, and it's about the light. One of the spaces uh, that I remember being, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, impressed by isn't quite the word, yeah. but, but I remember vividly <laughs> with the work, uh, a studio space of, of uh, uh, um, an artist, a sculptor called um, Kate Murdoch, because with, in hindsight, her <laughs> studio space, even though it's a workspace, it's yeah. actually a storage unit of okay. Granny's old memorabilia, basically. Oh, yeah. yes, okay, of course, you do I know. remember. Yeah, 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 right. But the thing is, taken there at a distance and removed mm. from that experience, yeah. it looks like the stage set for something like from Beckett, or <laughs> Nesco, you know, a kind of sort of avant-garde yeah. sort of wordy sort of uh, treatise on sort of, you know, the human condition. Absolutely. Right? Okay. No, it does. Uh, and of course, it has that proscenium sort of thing because it is a rect you know, it's shaped in a rectangle, it's a cube, obviously, yeah. in space. And again, with a very, very particular light source. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. very... There's a little bit of a... Oh, yes. A, that, a you'll see that in several extra of the pictures. Extra page that's been yeah. sneaked in here. Yeah. Um, so, so now, I mean, I mean, look at this. It's amazing. Now, you, you were just saying to me, you, you don't actually work from a drawing or anything. It's no. purely from your memory. Well, well, what happens is I start by doing a smaller painting, yeah. and then I use that as a guide for yeah. the other paintings. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh no, I've got a, a very yeah. good visual memory. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you must have yeah. amazingly good visual memory because this, this is the detail. In oh, hold things. on. I, I mean, don't forget, I, you know, I, I visited, this is uh, Graham Hitchens' workshop, one of the guys who has built the latest bike with, with uh, Dark Arc Engineering. Oh, okay. And I've visited this workshop umpteen times sure. and, and actually polished some metal on, on his, um, uh, uh, there's a metal polishing machine because I used to do metal finishing as well. Oh, right. So, so I'm familiar with a lot of the machinery. That's the other thing, of course, is this space is not alien or foreign to me. You get it? Even yeah. though I'm a painter, yeah. I have worked in workshops. In yes. fact, 
you know, my first job after leaving the Royal College of Art was building motorcycles. Really? Yeah, racing motorcycles, yes. Yeah. Are you building racing motorcycles? Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's interesting what people would... Um... And yeah, let's, let's move through them quickly. Yeah, yeah. This, this one, uh, one of my personal favourites, it's uh, from um, oh, Orford Ness. It's a, a, a space where the, the roof has obviously blown away. It's full of water, it's a basement, and, and you can see these swirls, right? And these oh. con conventions. So it's all liquid, literally, metaphorically liquid yes. and liquid. And it's a reflection in the water of the structure oh. of the roof, what's that is, left of it. That is uh, so actually it, This is why it has that sense of being inverted. Yeah, yeah. I had, I, that, yeah, that is actually so cool. Yeah. Now, moving on, oh. as they say. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll come back to Robin's workshop in a minute. This is um, uh, Aub Aubrey's workshop, or Simon Aldred of the um, Dark Arc Engineering. And, and it's they, Dark Arc. they built the bikes? They, they, no, they built the, the new one, the one that's the a work in progress, oh, okay, the, the larger okay. one, the V-Twin, okay. yes. And Aubrey has uh, oh, he's won loads of awards for his scooters and he builds custom oh, scooters. Oh, yeah, that's, yes, But he's, he's uh, as I say, blacksmith, um, um, metal worker, um, fabricator and everything. But, it, but the thing that excited me about this was yeah. the, the fact that I couldn't find the, the, light, the window in Andy Tierney's was a strength, right? I couldn't yeah, identify yeah. where Whereas here, the, these spare little windows obviously give you, look, it will, will, what should we say, give you a sense yeah. of sort of the, the fall or the cast of the light. Yeah. But there's so much for me to enjoy an incident, you know, in, in the... And the other thing, of course, is yeah. the more I revise a painting, this is true, the mm. worse it gets. <laughs> yeah, seriously, the more involved I get, the worse it gets. Well, yeah. that, that's what I was going to say, because, I mean, do, do many of these go wrong? Oh, yes. Because they look I'm like there's so yeah. much risk yeah, in them. Yes, exactly. Oh, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a high wire act, is a gratuitous yeah. piece of so, overstatement. So, but so, they are precarious, and quite frankly, that, you know, you get to a certain point where you suddenly think, am I just filling up that space because I'm, you know, I, I can't remember what happened or, mm. or I've, you know, I've lost... I mean, obviously, I go there and I've taken photographs in the past. Of course. But given, given up looking at them. I look at other paintings and I work from, as I say, I'm revising the paintings all the time. So, so if, if you think it's going well and you've got yeah, just a I, little I bit to go, is that this... sheer trauma? Uh... In case the last blush stroke messes Oh, no, no, up. no, no, no. What, what happens is I've, I, I, I'm constantly walking away. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I, I, I have to, I, is that enough? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. being kind of um, mean-spirited or spare, but mm. is that enough? Is that adequate? And most of the time, they're overstated, if I'm honest. Yeah. And okay. it, yeah that's why that big tin is painted down there. Mm. And to some, to some extent, they're one of uh, dark arc engineering with a scooter because there's an economy to that. Yeah. And there certainly is to this painting yeah. of my son's workshop down in Hastings, yeah. where at close quarters like this, it is a series of marks, yeah. right? Yeah. But from you know, 20, 10 to 20 feet away, mm. it's a very coherent, extremely lit, you know, uh, uh, so the space. I mean, it's, it's a place where the yeah. shadows have as much substance as the objects that cast yes. them. And yes. that's a really important pictorial, um, Hmm. Yeah, proposition. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. Very. Okay. Very interesting. Right, and of course the other thing with some of the paintings is yeah. to keep them viscous all the time, like this one here. This where, has got a much waterier yes, feel. Yes, it is. To well, it. basically, it's basically. Well, there's a, there's, there's a. It's painted in a slightly different way. Yes, it's a wet surface, but I mixed up some oh Van Dyke brown or something something similar. Just mm. that. And it was in a lot of liquid, and I applied that to the surface as well. So every time I put a brush stroke down, it was loaded, then it was unloaded. It was mm. loaded, then it was unloaded. Mm, it? Interesting. Right. Okay, now, um, there's Kate's studio again. It's probably a better and more oh, vivid wow. picture. Yeah. Um, again, the, the oh, idea wow. that sort of, um, I don't know, it's yeah. it sort of, as I say, it looks like the sort of, if, if not I were to have a set, and it clearly doesn't have a set, and it should yeah. never have had a set, but something that Beckett probably... Yeah, would have done. Something what Beckett wrote once. Yeah. Yeah, okay. what, what I absolutely love is, is like these backgrounds, where it's almost like there's a waterfall. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, basically, I'm trying, to I'm trying to paint the fall of light. Like this yeah. piece here, well, that was the only thing, oh, that's one of the few things that was masked, was the fluorescent strip, right? And I yeah. think these funny little old lampshades that are, 
were attached here. Oh, yes, and then I had, cool. I had to mask the tops of where I thought the cabinets would be, and then yeah. everything hangs together from there. Yeah. And I mean, as, as, oh, that, that really does feel like 1960s cheap like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Another uh, painting of my son's workshop, again, here, where you get to a certain point where oh, yeah, there's right. very little reason to paint anything there. Mm. Oh, and yes, so, so that's everyone. yeah. where you step back. Exactly, that's where I yeah. step back. Or where I simply stop because I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And when you don't know what to do, you do nothing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so uh, another picture of a painting of... Uh, Dark Arc Engineering with the, the, the Lambretta, the ubiquitous Lambretta. Yeah. And this is another picture of Graham Hitchin's studio, uh, workshop, studio, <laughs> workshop, whoops, well, there we go. Yeah. Uh, and of course, yeah, for a lot of people, a lot of the parts, they, they can't identify what they are. And that's yeah. okay. I can't remember what the half of them are now, right? Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, look, you've got the window there. That's really coming in. Yes, but oh, look, right, it's a slightly, it's very, very slightly oh, diffused. Yeah, very yeah. nice. Yes, because they're wet into wet. Very cool. And it's and so that, these are the bikes. Yes, well, that one was built about uh, three or four years ago by a guy called Gilbert Sills. Of, um, okay. Who, who, and all of these workshops are local, right? Okay. okay. Right. Gilbert was a uh, Lotus Formula One technician, mechanic, in the late 70s. and okay. was involved in you know, Formula One World Championship winning cars with Lotus, with Colin Chapman and Mario Andretti. And this is the latest uh, one, again with another, what's called a JA Presswich engine, which are these classics of engines. This engine saw service in a sheep station in Western Australia. Extraordinary. From 1930 to 19, I think about 1980 when they got electricity and then it was yeah. thrown away. Um, it's a very complicated, I'm not going to get into all the technicalities, but what you have to realise is yeah. that the tank this is scratch built from a flat piece of metal. Okay. In fact, take the camera around here, look, yeah. and you can actually see some of the metal being... In, oh, Because wow. this is very much a work in progress, this one. So okay? th this is made from... It, it's just bare sheet steel. It's, it's just steel. literally been put together yeah. from... Yeah, this is handmade, yeah. Unbelievable. And yeah. so this is a new bike made like... That's a very interesting use of the word new. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, <laughs> I'm not really sure that that's... On the trade descriptions, I get away with that, <laughs> seeing as most of the parts... Uh, the frame and the, the identity of it as a vehicle is from 1953, it's an aerial, which is why, incidentally, go down here, yeah. I've had this composite, very cleverly, what well, I think cleverly made, yeah. with the aerial logo, with the A, and the J and the P of J.A. Presswich. Oh, so I've confused really cool. the two together as if it were a, a real yeah. logo from the 30s, get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the whole thing looks, as I say, when they go to rallies, the, the, that bike's been to a rally, and yeah. people have thought it was a restoration, where in actual fact, the only thing that's from the 30s is the engine and the frame. So is that playing with old and new in the paintings as well? Yeah, it's, it's like historical fiction. Oh, yeah. well, well, hold on, that's the, in the bikes. Is that the case with the paintings? I'm not really that sure. Yes, in terms of language, of course. Yeah, yeah because, yeah. you know, um, oh, that's, sorry, that we're getting into very, very complex territory <laughs> now. Um, and listen, uh, to round it up, at the end of the day, the idea is about accessibility and creativity. Yeah. Okay. And I empathise, identify with the creativity of mm. people that you know who who can make bits of sheet metal turn into something as beautiful it's as that. Super, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And it looks seamless. And when you yeah. see it in construction, it's literally so many pieces like that that gradually close and are bent with a hammer. Would you believe oh, man. until they become this wonderful, coherent biconvex surface. Which is absolutely bloody perfection. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And of course, it's got a finish like hammer. glass, and that was painted by a guy down in Hastings, a guy yeah. called Matt Baum, who is stunning. I mean, and this, this is, um, Al yeah. is uh, Al Alcantara, I believe. Oh, I can never... Anyway, anyway, it's a yeah. synthetic suede. It's used for the headlining in very, very upmarket cars. Oh, right. And it's it looks totally brilliant. impractical on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Even yeah. better. And then wherever we go, all the bra all the nuts are going to become brass, so all of the accents oh. like this huge bell mouth here, which was spun oh, wow. out. Look at that. That's billet machined out of a solid piece of brass. And then there's mm. this wonderful gauze uh, so cool. venturi cover is there. So um, no, you yeah. know, about it's half of you know, this is all billet machined and that's from yeah. brass sheet and so on. A lot of it's yeah. 
a scratch, scratch built a lot of it as is the other one yeah yeah, yeah. and then updated with disc brakes and obviously you know the internals and the electrics are all updated have you ridden the one that's built yeah yeah i've ridden yeah. that yes quite a bit yes i've been to yeah. loads of rallies and stuff yes but these days at my age i just potter around <laughs> i mean i've done all the kind of you know what should we say tearing around the tt course for the last 40 years and yeah i'm, I'm okay i'm in a good place now i just sort yeah. of potter around and yeah yeah i'm, I'm okay <laughs> I, I i think actually it's self-preservation yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How many times are you going to fall off? It's anyway, so yeah. so you know, working with Aubrey and Graham, it's been an absolute thrill yeah, treat, as as it was with Gilbert when we built that. Yeah, but, yeah they uh, are you know. amazing. So, uh, yeah. but I wanted to show this, even though it's a work in progress. Yeah. Oh no, it's got I a long way to go. I mean, the with the engine, we haven't found anybody. Well, I've found people, but nobody's sort of what should we say. I can't get the engine done till the autumn, so yeah. I won't be riding it until Easter next this time next year. So okay. that's okay. It's already taken two and a half, three years. Yeah, wow, mm. a long time. And that's and during that time, I've been hanging out in these workshops. Yeah. Uh, and um, in, in, you know, yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, yes, uh, yeah. yeah, go on. Well, it's an absolutely amazing show. Do, do you feel this is one of your sort of pinnacle? Yeah, this moments? is the best. This is the strongest and most coherent and. Most, um, that's the best show I've ever done. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I've done shows. No, I, no, there's nothing I. Why would I, you say it's the best one? Uh, because I know that this is, I, I feel I am beginning <laughs> at last to, to realise my potential, as I say. Interesting. Yeah. 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 And that is in this sort of, in these, the strokes that drift in and out of reality and the Oh, light, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this whole kind of sort of mind matter sort of, the, and the dualism of painting, which you outlined, and which I said is epitomised in Manet, where you see the yeah. object, you see the subject matter, and the two start to um, inform each other, mm. yeah? Yeah, yeah. It, it's one of the things that, for me, distinguishes painting from illustration. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Always does, whereas the object takes on a different cult reality, both culturally as well as phenomenally. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing thing when it yeah. works. Anyway. Yeah, Graham, I've absolutely loved chatting as usual. Absolutely amazing to see the show. I'm so yeah, pleased yeah. to have come here. And I think absolutely everybody should come and see this show because it is, I mean, it's just absolutely wonderful. Good, thanks, Rob. And um, well, here's to the success of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is just the first of the two. There'll be a of landscape course, yeah. show following on in about a month's time. Yeah. And uh, anyway. Brilliant. That's, that's, another, another, that's story. another story. Anyway, exactly. lovely to chat Thanks, as usual. Bro. Okay, Thanks, take God. care. Cheers.